the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wrap this one up in green and red. Hello, Railcats fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Railcats Block Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Vettage, and I know it's been uh, about 10 days since I posted my last video. Um, that's just because with the playoff race getting so hot, um, you know, I was trying to focus on that and with a new job. I'm working a lot more mornings and not a lot of nights, overnight, stuff like that. So I wasn't able to get around to really recording anything. Um, and the days that I was able to, I was really tired. So I, I, I didn't want to put out a, a podcast of me just like falling asleep. Um, but, you know, I had a, I know there's still two games left and the Railcast did win last night. And I was at that game and then I was at the, the game the night before where they uh, ended up losing six to nine. Um, the offense kind of rallied a little bit there late, but just couldn't do anything against Milwaukee. Um, they just got such a big lead at the beginning. Um, it was interesting to see, you know, Jesus Mario get hit an inside the park home run. Um, don't get to see a lot of those. And we, I got to see one of those, you know, sitting right there where I've normally been sitting. Um, it, it was an awesome experience just to see that because, you know, I think the the steel yard is probably one of the only ones if the I mean yes the ball bounced right but with it being 400 feet um to center field and Mariaga's speed I mean by the time the ball hit the um center field wall he was already basically to second so there was no reason for guys to send him not to send him because that's what you know we wanted to see and that's what we got um on that aspect of it but I mean, with the Railcats not making the playoffs, they, they still can play spoilers with Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee um, is, um, yeah, they're a game back from uh, from the Dogs and King County. That's another series to really watch for is the King County and Chicago Dogs series just because they're both right now tied for first in the East. So I don't know really what Milwaukee needs to do. They probably need, they, they, they'll, they'll need to win both games coming down the stretch here against the Railcats, but I don't really think, I think they're going to solidify the third spot. I don't think they're going to move up or down. Um, so that'll be an interesting one because there, there's no really gain. There's no really game to gain ground in that aspect of it. Unless they, he, unless Milwaukee has any tiebreakers with either one of those teams. And that would be the only time that they would jump over them. Um, also Fargo, Moorhead and Kansas city, uh, Fargo Moorhead's up by a game, but they're both playing each other. So, you know, if you're bored, want something to watch on American Association TV, just make sure to uh, to watch those games because that will be keeping a close eye on those ones. Um, but let's get a little bit back to the Railcats. They did win yesterday um, here 3-2, to two, which was kind of a rocky. I mean, I think Harrison Francis had one of his better nights. Um, he was solid. Um, then they brought in Julio Vivas, and I, you know, he's done really good throughout the year, um, but he kind of shook there a little bit. They gave him the two runs, and Jack Eisenberg came in and shut down the door. Um, so it was a good overnight or a good overall day to watch a game. I was excited to go to both games. Um, we're actually talking about doing the family season passes next year, not season tickets, just because with you know other things along the lines of that. I, but the family season tickets are would be a good good one for us to use um just because of if other family wants to go and i don't really care where i sit i don't really think there's a bad seat in the steel yard and probably next year i'll probably spend a lot more time in the outfield just because i i like watching baseball from the outfield i know it may seem a little weird um but i just think you see the game sometimes just a tad bit better better from the outfield than besides sitting behind a fence um but yeah definitely enjoyed this year um I actually got to speak with Tony Pasquese and um, Tom Wallraven um, after the game, and big thank you to Pauly um, for letting me claim his jersey <laughs> so I could get out on the field. Um, it kind of broke the ice a little bit of me kind of getting on the field. I'm a very shy person, and weird to say. Um, I'm a very shy person when it comes to that kind of stuff, and I know I'm doing stuff like this. You know, sometimes it takes a lot to get behind a camera and – you know, I, I just I don't have that personality of going out and seeking people. So that's just something I have to work on for next year, especially um, if I want to get better coverage of the Railcats. And I, I know it's something that I need to do, but I just it was a feeling out process this year, how it was going to go. And I've really enjoyed every second that I've done it. Um, 
yes, it's not the Cubs, it's not the White Sox, but it's still very good baseball to go and watch and enjoy uh, family time, uh, to watch kids run around, have a good time, to watch other people have a good time. It, you know, it, it's always just a fun experience going to the Real Cats game. And, you know, that's something interesting as well that Tom Walraven said um, about the facility. But I'll get a little bit in that one and both of their futures, uh, Tony and Tom's future with the Rail Cats, if they're coming back. If not, um, they did tell me a little bit of what's going on in in, in the future on that aspect of it. Um, but, you know, the whole just getting on the field experience was cool. Um, the games this year have been fun. Every game, I, I, it kind of it was kind of weird at the beginning of the year. Every game we've gone to up to, I think, the dogs game i think they may rain a little bit there i think the first milwaukee game that we went to um which was a couple weeks ago was the only game that we went to that didn't rain the home opener with the home opener it rained there um i think we saw the dogs and it, it drizzled a little bit um i think another game we went to it started to drizzle the same thing but the last two games were very well actually three games were very nice nights to watch baseball it hasn't been too hot too cold um, I thought yesterday was going to be a little bit brutal, but luckily where we sat, we weren't sitting in the sun. There's a nice breeze, the cloud coverage, um, just a good experience there on that aspect of it. But then, uh, like I said, I don't want to make this podcast very long just because I just kind of give an idea of what the future is going to be hold. I'll, I'll have a end of season podcast uh, probably after Labor Day's game. Um, I may have something put out. Um, I may come home and record something or may have to wait a little bit. Um, but I'll, I'll get into a rhythm like once a week, just kind of having uh, maybe a player breakdown, a game breakdown, uh, my favorite moments of the year, you know, your guys' favorite moments of the year. Um, if you have one, be sure to put that down in the comments below so I can kind of get that rolling. Um, podcast of, you know, what we kind of want to see. I'll, probably a lot of the podcasts that are going to come out are going to be a little bit of a mixture of like um, covering the playoffs a little bit because i think that's something that we still could all be kind of inclined to i don't think once the rail cats are over with i think that's when it cuts off no i, I think that you know we have to be able to support the american association as well um because it's still very good baseball to watch and you know it seems like the playoffs are really ramping up um on that aspect of it so i'll, I'll definitely have like you know things i think the american association you know i'll just have different podcasts of different things that we could talk about um, I, I just won't be, you know, silent for a whole year until things kick back up with the real cats. You know, um, I, I'll keep that all. It'll all be, you know, relevant. I'll still be relevant. Um, if you really enjoy the pie, don't worry, I'll still be relevant. Um, I just know at the end of the month here, um, especially from the 22nd to October, October 2nd, um, I will be having my wedding, uh, honeymoon that kind of stuff so i will be not around for probably about two three weeks just because of that purpose getting back in the work groove getting back from vacation honeymoon that kind of stuff um so there will be times that i won't be posting a whole lot um but i i will sure to it, it won't be hopefully more than two weeks that i'll put a podcast out um, I, I don't want to go that long because sometimes you start going that long as people start to get like, Hey, is he going to be doing this anymore? And don't worry. I still will be, um, I'll, I'll get better with it next year. Once I kind of get a rhythm again on that aspect of it. Oh, my eyes are watering allergy season. Um, but getting onto the field, um, talking to Tony Pasquese. And the funny thing about talking with Tony was that with him being the public address announcer, and I know at the beginning of the year he was up in the booth with Ryan Zimmerman at some of the games he could go to. Um, and then the old PA announcer, I think he had a stroke or a heart attack and couldn't do it anymore. Um, so Tony took, has taken over. And I thought Tony had done a very good job at the PA announcing. Um, he just it just seems like a natural at it. Um, he has that goofy, funny kind of personality that... Um, you kind of enjoy, um, you, you know, you can't always be serious all the time doing some stuff. So he kind of has that little bit of quirkiness to him. And I, I guess I'm a more, I like quirkiness because I can be quirky sometimes. Um, so I enjoy the people that are quirky, not so much just like this is how it has to be said, you know. But getting back into Friday's game was the uh, like Haunted Night, um, sponsored by Haunted Hospital 
Um, that's one place you'll never catch me at is a haunted house. I just hate haunted houses. It just, I just don't, I don't know. It's just something about haunted houses I just don't like. But anyways, we were walking to our seats and there was a guy dressed up and he like walked in front of me and he said something to my fiance, like she's mine or something. Just being that, you know, creepy kind of the, what he's being paid to do. And I think a lot of them were probably haunted hospital employees, I think. Um, but anyways, there was a guy that came up with a Mike, Mike Wazowski <laughs> uh, costume on. He says, I'm, I'm actually more scary than that guy is or what, you know, however he said it. And he walked away. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's pretty funny. They didn't really put two and two together and we're sitting down watching the game. And I see a guy with a microphone and then the normal girl that does it, uh, the in between hitting stuff like that. And he has a binder and I really didn't catch on to it, and then he turned around, and he was speaking. I was hearing over the I was like, oh, my God, that's Tony Pasquazzi. I feel like an idiot. Um, so it's odd to see the PA announcer on the field with the book. You know, I know that right now they, they don't have a lot of their interns um, going back to school or doing whatever they're doing, so they don't have a lot of interns. So a lot of them have to do other things that they're not normally used to doing. But it was still cool to see him on the field talking over the microphone, you know, watching him go around the different parts of the ballpark with his binder, saying things, you know, just to be able to to move around and, and know what you're doing and know the lineup as well. Because even yesterday, um, I saw him just, I don't know if he looked at the binder real quick and then was about, you know, said something, but he knew the milkman's next person up to bat and he had the binder closed. So just be able to memorize all of that and doing a job. So, well, you know, that's just a little things that maybe a lot of people don't notice, but I'm able to notice just because of being in the background um, of doing media stuff like that. I know it may not seem like that, but I've been behind the scenes of some stuff, not anything completely major. Um, but I, I have been around and I understand, you know, there's little things that you get to see that, most people don't may not understand or where the case may be or you know it may just be super easy it's just still interesting to me to watch someone walk around the ballpark and be interactive with people but be able to you know read off of a binder and not make mistakes and be on the right page and so on and so forth but anyways talking to him you know i, I said i felt like an idiot because i didn't realize that was you and uh I said, you know, I gave him his compliments because I thought he has done a very good job, PA, PA announcing, and he's done a very good job when he was with Ryan in the booth. And, uh, you know, I kind of asked him, I said, so what's, you know, your future? You know, is this, uh, you know, you're going to be back next year or, you know, what's the, the scenario on that aspect of it? He goes, he does have a couple full-time jobs lined up that he's interviewed for. And if he does get, um, obviously, he won't be with the Railcats next year, but if it doesn't work out or the case may be, he said that um, he would definitely be back. Um, I think he said he's going to take a job with um, a community college in St. Paul, I believe. Um, so it, it's, it's awesome to see him on that aspect of it. Um, you know, you get to see people move on, uh, go to bigger, better things sometimes, but just be able to know that if this person does make it bigger than um you know a couple community colleges if they do make it higher in whatever sport they do soccer uh, baseball football hockey whatever it is just to know that you you knew them at the starting point and see them grow and that i guess that's the interesting part especially in the media realm is that a lot of these places are a starting point and people are moving forward to see their growth on like the players sometimes they hit the triple a and then they kind of bring themselves back down and they try to work their way i mean no matter what everyone's working to get to a, another spot than just being with rail cats completely understand that and it's just fun to see that growth and then getting to talk with tom Walraven. um i know i someone has mentioned to me that you know this is probably his potential last year a teaching degree this kind of stuff and so i kind of asked him i said you know i know you've been with the rail cats a little bit longer hitting a home run, you know, you seem like that's kind of you're becoming a streaky player. Just kind of talking about that stuff, but I just really wanted to know what he was, uh, what his plans were. He said that um, next year he's, uh, well, probably this year he, he's going back home, uh, hometown to Connecticut and uh, getting a teaching degree there. There's a lot of spots open there. So um, he's like, yeah, you know, just that's, that's 
time to move on and then he goes and that's the other thing is um that a lot of people don't maybe know but a lot of the american players have backup plans they they all are you know they know that it may be the end of the road it may just be you know a roadblock but they understand that they have to have a backup plan they just can't go out there and play baseball and it be it like but then he said a lot of the dominican republic uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Cuban, Venezuela players, all of them, they have, like, that. this is all they have, right? This is what they strive. This is what they want to play for. They got nothing else. This is all they have. So it's just interesting to hear the the, the two sides to it where, you know, baseball is, is huge in those areas. And, you know, sometimes that's all that they have you know that's all they have they don't may maybe not have the education to do it they they may have the skill but they aren't fully there i mean it's very hard to make it to affiliated ball it, it unless you know even to get it into the show like it's just crazy the amount of talent you have to have and there's some talented players that the railcats have that are from those areas I, it, jesus mariaga is probably your prime example um of that um even i think lg castillo is an american player though um, but Victor Nova, you just, you see a lot of the, you know, they, they have the talent, um, or the batting ability, but you know, you can kind of see, you see everyone's kind of flaws a little bit of where things kind of fall apart. But the only one I would say, I would say maybe because of his batting average is Jesus Mariaga. I, I really haven't seen a lot of, um, flaw if that makes sense not you know maybe striking out sometimes watching pitches that kind of stuff but like defensively he okay he had, he had one error and it was kind of an in-between ball that was you know it dropped out in front of him bounced off his leg it was kind of but it was just in between her like during the time he's very confident in everything he makes um he's always all over the field so you know sometimes you can see other people's flaws maybe fielding arm um base running abilities that kind of stuff i know he got caught a couple times stealing but sometimes that happens um but he he's one of those i'm just like i don't really know why he's not in affiliated ball i think he could develop to be a very good player in affiliate ball if he was really given the opportunity but like i said once you get into that realm and those ranks there's a lot of players like that um so there's probably a flaw that i just don't see um that maybe scouts see or other coaches see that i just don't get to um but then i was kind of talking to wall raven i said you know how, how is it playing in gary you know because you know you hear people talk it's it's gary no one wants to be in gary he goes i he's like he basically said i'm gonna stop you there i said he, he said that the facility is probably if not the best facility in the league um he loves the locker room setup uh the field is a great condition um the fans are always great um he they, they he he basically described it as to like chicago who's basically a brand new facility they said their locker rooms are in center field like that makes no sense why are locker rooms in center field um he just says the playing condition is just a lot better um so i mean that could just be hometown bias um but just to hear that kind of come out and, and you would think that maybe Gary not being the best is probably one of the better ones and people come there for a reason. And so that's always a big, big attraction, I guess, for some people is, hey, the facility is very nice. Come and play here. So like I said, we're seeing a lot of changes with the Railcats. Um, you know, we're getting away from the small ball to getting to this bigger faster built team to where they're going to hit the ball further um and that's fine you know we want to see that and it's just all going to be correlated together i know i think starting pitching at the beginning of the year held its ground it kind of fluttered a little bit but i think the biggest issue was that we didn't have a shutdown closer or shutdown pitching uh towards the end of the game and you know you saw a lot of starters go deep into games or go to five, six innings. And then as soon as the reliever was brought in, the game just kind of got out of hand. Um, so I think if they had a shutdown person, I understand that Vega went somewhere else, but I'm just, that's 
that's to me was the shutdown closer. I mean, he just kind of came in and he just shut the door on everyone. And you just didn't get that from anyone else that tried to play. I mean, Jack Eisenbarger did a great, great job yesterday's game to shut people down, but it just wasn't consistent. There wasn't a lot of consistency um, in the pitching roles. And sometimes relief pitching got put in crappy situations. Jack Eisenbarger did get put in a couple of crappy situations. I know Julio Vivas got put in a couple. Nick, Nick Garcia did as well. But I'm just those are the things that you want to see the teams battle through and fight out and get rid of. Um, on that aspect of it um, but yeah I'll have all different kinds of things going on for the podcast so don't be worried that there'll be things I'll talk about um, that kind of stuff so be sure to follow me on Twitter on Facebook um, and on the YouTube um, if you have any comments questions concerns comment down below uh, I do a lot of the more of the posting on Facebook um, but yeah it'll be interesting it'll be a fun off season uh, I know it's not off season quite yet um, but when it hits that point, eh, don't worry. I won't be going away and it's coming back out of the blue. So I'll be doing real cats coverage all year long. If there's any moves or whatever the case may be, I'll hopefully figure it out and, and go on from there. But like I said, if you enjoyed the podcast, leave a like, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your evening, whenever you're watching this and, uh, go cats.